Thank you for the invitation to speak up here in the North West and allow me, let me congratulate you on the great election result you got when your candidate Nick Griffin got elected to the European Parliament. That was a tremendous victory, doubled up by Andrew Bronze over there in Yorkshire in the Humberside. And that election result gave hope to millions, millions and millions of people, because believe me, us in this room, we're not the only people who are concerned, gravely concerned about what's happening to Britain. There are millions of people, but they don't know what to think and they don't know what to do. And when they see a patriot like Nick Griffin here in the North West and Andrew Bronze, who I've also known for many, many years, win these seats, that gave heart to millions. And basically, ladies and gentlemen, we're in business to give heart to people because millions of people don't like what's happening to our country but they say to you the times I've had it said to me on doorsteps nothing you could do about it mate when we win that breaks that lie that when we win that breaks that lie and did not did corrupt establishment did they not expose themselves with the way that they treated our man yes down at the BBC so-called question time that bear garden that bear garden where the British establishment, the, left, the vile left-wing mob outside who'd tear you from limb to limb if they had a chance, and the open collusion by the speakers, <coughs> Labour, Liberal, Tory, made no difference. They were all against our man. That The chairman, Dimbleby, to his shame, was openly biased and prejudiced against our man. And in the audience, the audience was totally phony, hand-picked, multiracial audience to do our, our man was the Daniel in the lion's den. And all credit to him, all credit to him. He held his own under very difficult circumstances and landed some good blows against those um, bar lambs, as I think they're called. Yeah, bar lambs of the lip lab con parties. Now, the, the, the proof of the pudding, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. The, that was on the Thursday, the Friday, the enormous coverage. On the Saturday, I went out with our team of, of activists, leafleters, in our little area of South London. We're putting out these excellent brand new leaflets the party has um, produced, um, putting British people first, no to crime, no to immigration, no to EU, EU rule, no to higher taxes to keep foreigners in luxury. Um, we put these leaflets out and time after time as we went down the streets, people were saying to us, yes, I saw your man, he did very well and all that lot were against him. But he did very, very well and we'll vote for you. So most heartening, most heartening. And overall, a tremendous victory that, that has given hope to millions. And the hope comes when, when patriots are seen to beat these failure parties and it's most most welcome most welcome the, the victory you had up here and the victory in uh, Yorkshire and our earlier victories this party has been winning elections since 2002 when in Burnley not too far from here um, the team in Burnley got the first three BNP councillors elected this millennium in Burnley and then it rolled on and now this little party of ours little party of brave hearts We've now got a hundred elected councillors. Last year we got a man, Richard Barnbrook, elected onto the um, Greater London Assembly, and now this um, our two victories this year. And believe me, these victories are needed and very welcome. This party was set up to defend the interests of the British people, and we have never been more needed. I will say here, speaking as a Londoner, that we are witnessing, we who live in, or work in, in or near these great cities of ours, London, Manchester, Birmingham, we are witnessing the collapse of civilization. I would say that, the collapse of civilization. I would say that. I am one of the older ones in this room. I remember a Briton when we didn't have armed police. I remember a Britain when we didn't have the word mugger in our, in our vocabulary because there were no muggers. I remember a Britain that wasn't full of millions and millions of foreigners. I remember, a, I remember Britain when it was a civilized country, when the shopkeepers were white British, when the bus drivers were white British, when the doctors and nurses in our hospitals were white British. I remember that, and I 
it hurts me to see the changes. It hurts me to see what's happening to this country, um, which is why I, like others, have been active in this party and stayed the cause, like Alan here. Alan's been... Alan, you're a founder member, yes? Alan Payne from Salford. When I say Manchester, he says Salford. Alan Payne from Salford as a founder member. Let's have a round of applause for Alan here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I remember a Britain where everybody had a job, where everybody had a job, and where everybody was expected to work. I remember that. No freeloaders, I remember that. What went wrong? What has gone wrong? That we're in politics, the question is, what has gone wrong with this country? And we're in politics, and I will point my finger every time at the political parties who have failed us. Liberal, Labour, Tory makes no difference. In the last 50 years, they've opened the door to mass immigration that has changed our country, changed our society, changed everything. Whether Labour governments or Tory governments, that's the important thing. When you meet Tories, say to them, Tory governments, Labour government, they've all opened the door to mass immigration. They've organised, encouraged mass immigration from the, the rest of the world into our country so that now you wouldn't recognise the towns or the streets that you're born in. I speak from absolute practical experience. Here. For the record, I was born. For the record, I was born in 1943, so I'm now 66 years of age. The streets that I was brought up as a kid, I was, it was all white children in the schools that I went to in London, West London. It was just England, England. At the bottom of the street, every now and again, I go back to Hounslow. I come from Hounslow, if you know Hounslow, West London. Hounslow is now effectively part of New Delhi. New Delhi. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> At the bottom of the street where I lived is now a huge mosque. And I go back there sometimes to remind myself of why I'm in this business. We have been utterly betrayed by the politicians who have never, ever, ever, they call this country democracy. Yes, Britain is a democracy and long live the will of the people. Long live our way of life. But the fact is, the parties have never obtained a mandate for the enormous changes that they've uh, created in our society. The Labour Party, the Liberal Party, the Tory Party, they've never gone to the people and said, vote for us because we're going to change this country out of all recognition. They have never said that. And I can tell you, I can tell that the younger people in this room who must wonder, they must think that if, if as younger people, they know that this was once a white, law-abiding society, as it was. I can confirm it. Older people can tell you, yes, we once had a country called Britain. How did it get to this state? I would tell you, through lies. Through lies. Through lies. When immigration first started, and I remember this, in the 1950s, when the Tories were in power in the 1950s, the Tories wanted to uh, import into Britain cheap labour from the third world. The British people didn't want this race problem. In the 1950s, the 1950s, people knew all about the race problems in the United States of America. They knew about the race problems in the deep south of the US. They knew about the racial tensions in the big northern cities of the United States of America. I can tell you, if you don't already know, that during the Second World War, when the Second World War was going on and the US um, conscripted millions of white men to serve in their armies, to make up the labour shortage in their big northern factories in Detroit, in Chicago, etc., the US um, encouraged Negroes from the Deep South to work in these big industries in Detroit and Chicago. And during the Second World War, there were major race riots in the US cities in which dozens on both sides of the racial divide of these big cities, dozens of blacks and dozens of whites were killed in race riots during the Second World War. Now, people knew that in the 50s and they didn't want these problems imported into Britain 